question mark there is Shannon Smith. Only managing one rep, I believe. That's not official in terms of results. But that's a lot of points to drop for the defending champion. It is, but, you know, it is just one event. And she did get some points, so... You yes, know, we, she we got the one rep, how which, they stack up. which is very, very important. But let us, let's not forget that these athletes are vying for qualifying to that finals round. The top ten are the only that advance. And this is our women's masters over 40 division, or over 40 class. Lane number one, Stephanie Vermichuk from the USA. Lane two, Anika Karhu from Finland. Lane three, Maria Krizensika. Krizensinska from England. And lane number four, Aisha Uya from, Ula. Finland, from Ireland. Ireland. Yep. Defending champion, Aisha. The same weight, 165 pounds, 75 kilograms on the Viking press. And our defending champion is looking strong. She was very solid, consistent performance last year on every single event. Vermichuk is answering the call here in lane one with seven reps, and Karhu in lane two, right behind with six, just locking out her seventh. Very tight battle between these three ladies. This is close. Zinsinska trying her absolute best to get one repetition on the board. Vermichuk inching ahead. Ten repetitions for Vermichuk and Ulla. Kuru just one rep behind. Ulla oh, timed that one well there. Did she get that last final rep? She did not. No, she just outside just the short. time. That's unlucky. Wow, that, that was a nail-biter between lane one and lane four there. Very, very close. It's going to be interesting watching them on these next few events. All right, our next heat. Mara Rositas from Canada. Aaron Jackson of Australia in lane number two. Lane number three, Monica Gregg of the USA. And lane number four, Melanie Poa of New Zealand. She needs to rush. Oh, here she there comes. There's no time to wait for athletes today. They've been very strict with the rules. They are starting when they're ready. They won't be waiting for athletes. There we go. The clock is gone. Drag in lane number two. Already onto three reps. She has got the shoulder power Big for days. Big smiles from Jackson, but I think she's accepting that this isn't her event. And despite that rush at the start, Poe has managed to get three repetitions. Drag is at seven, but the fatigue is setting in. And this just shows how impressive those under 64 kilo athletes were. Come on. Rositas trying her absolute best to lock out one rep. Tremendous effort from all of the athletes right here on this heat. The um, referees are getting too quick at resetting those scores. I'm not catching what the final reps are, but we will bring you official results as soon as we have them. I know Greg got at least seven before they took off that, that rep counter right there. All right. Our third heat of the women's over 40 division. Kristen McCarthy in lane one from the USA. T. York from the USA in lane two. Christy Stefanik of the USA in lane three. And Alea Arnett of the USA in lane four. All USA athletes on this third heat. 165 pounds. Right, 
Arnett looking powerful. McCarthy going nice and steady in lane number one as well. It's going steady, but relying on a lot of shoulder power there. Yeah, very little leg drive there, yeah. just relying on those shoulders and triceps, and they burn out fast. They You've got to get that do. leg power into an event like this. You need to if save those smaller muscles for when it's getting harder towards the end. I always tell my athletes, theoretically, if you can use as much leg drive as possible, you could power it up with just your legs. Absolutely. Although that is very far stretched to do, the theory is there that if you use your legs to their full extent, you save the shoulders. And to last a whole minute, under such a tremendous load. You want to make those first few reps as easy as possible. Yes. Use your whole body. And a lot of people mistake strongman events. They see an event like this and they think it's a shoulder movement. Every movement in strongman should be using your whole body. Learn to be as explosive and powerful as possible. A symphony of strength, Absolutely. If you will. It's about movement, not about muscle groups. Great work from these athletes. Moving on to our fourth heat, Rachel Paveglio of the USA, lane number two, Joy McDonald of the USA, lane number three, Mary Colasanto of the USA, and lane number four, Sophie Allen of the United Kingdom. Athletes are ready. Peveglio really using that leg drive like we were just talking about. Absolutely. It's really, really nice. Almost as if the apparatus glides up there to lock out. Biting her strength. But we see Colasanto in lane number three just got to double digits with 10 reps. Yeah. Enjoy also put it down to bite her energy. And she's still looking powerful there. Lane number three. 13 repetitions. This is impressive now. We've got a real battle between these two. Ooh, Pavelio just fell 15. short. Colasanto doing extremely well here. 15 reps. She's still got time for more. 16. This is good. Come on. Keep going. She wanted that 18th rep so we bad. Have but a new leader there with 17 repetitions. All four athletes walking away with points on the board and with a new leader. Mary Colasanto, 17 reps with 165 pounds, 75 kilograms. Moving on to our fifth heat, lane number one, Carrie Ann Davis of the USA. Lane number two, Meg Robson Austin of England. Lane number three, Claire Meyer of Wales. And lane number four, Michaela Moore of England. Davis, Robson, Austin, Myla, and Moore. Let's see who wins this mini battle. All four athletes, no problem with these first few reps. Robson, Austin, just being very methodical, focusing on one rep at a time. Tremendous leg drive from Moore in lane number four. You can see that at the bottom of each of her repetitions, she's using that ascent back up to power up the apparatus rather than stand and really go to a separate nice technique. rep. Very energy efficient. Davis in lane number one looking very powerful. Strong shoulders and triceps. Not quite as efficient as Moore's technique, but still getting the job done. And Already a strong mohawk as well. That's impressive. 11 repetitions so far. This is a good battle. All four athletes performing exceptionally well. Davis is calling it at 11 reps. I think, I think Moore's on 12. She got 12. Fell short of 13. 12 repetitions there for Moore. All of the 
all athletes hit some really good points there. That was a good battle. Inching very close to double digits, all of them. And I commented on it during that Viking press, but I think I think Davis has the best Mohawk here today. Carrie Ann Davis. Let's get her an award for that. <laughs> Okay. Okay, our sixth heat. Kiki Berlin Johnson of Norway in lane number one. Julia Smay of the USA in lane two. Sandra Heger of the USA in lane three. And Jessica Rush of the USA in lane four. And I like this new feature. We get some replays this year. This is good to see. Again, another heat where every single athlete is Smay is this. looking very fast. She needs to be careful to get those down commands. Kiki is by far the tallest athlete in this heat. She Long has the arms. most distance to travel from, from rack to lockout. Thank you. Brilliant, thanks. Julia Smay back up, locking out her 13th rep. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll look after it. Jessica Rush, five reps on lane four. Sanda Hager, six. Julius May walks away with 14 reps. 14. And Kiki, two reps. I believe 14 is good enough for second or third place so far. I think so, right behind the 17 reps. That Mary Colsanto hit earlier. Okay, moving on to our seventh heat in lane one, Lacey Hughes of the USA. Lane number two, Kelly Jones, USA. Lane number three, Samantha McLean of Great Britain. And lane number four, Laura O'Connor Butler of the USA. Final heat in this Masters Women's Division. Lanes number one and two, hot out the gates. Also, lane number four. All four athletes, points on the board. Jones in lane number two, already into double figures. She is looking to hunt down that target of 17 reps but those shoulders and triceps are fatiguing you look how long that lockout took right there she's going to have to work very hard for these last four reps if she wants to match first lacy hughes six repetitions on the board and she wants more getting back under the viking press and the fatigue is just too much for jones in lane number two Solid result, though, there for our final heat of four from the over 40s women's class. And I believe we're going to get some official results now from the under 64 kilo class. And all that while we get two will be up next. They will have a weight change. The Viking Press apparatus will raise to 205 pounds or 93 kilograms. The weight just gets heavier and heavier. Still well in excess of the athlete's own body weight. So our results from our women's over 40 class. Mary Colasanto with 17 repetitions in first place. Julia Smay in second with 14. Rachel Paveglio with 13. And then, you know, Rachel and Kelly Jones actually tied for third place with 13 reps. I see Michaela Moore with 12 reps and a three-way tie with that 11 reps. Look at that. Stephanie Vermichuk, uh, Aisha Uya, and Carrie Ann Davis, all with 11 reps. Then moving on to the nine reps tie for Annika and Monica 
with a third to tie with not a four-way tie. We yeah, are seeing a lot of ties here. Yeah, you do with these with this many athletes and the rep events. You are going to see ties, but the most important thing, once again, putting those points on the board. Seven events to get through if you want to be a world champion this weekend. There's so many points to fight for. It's all about that consistency. If you can get yourself on that first page on every single event, you don't need to win an event. You just need to be consistently picking up those points. Now, interesting thing about our women's over 40 division or class, four athletes failed to get a rep. No athlete got only one rep, but two athletes tied for two. Yeah, so a, a bit of a discrepancy in strength there, if you will, or, or I guess... One hundred kilos, same weight. York and Rosaitis straight down this, the field. And just grip going there. She was moving really quickly. She was, and York clears it without a drop. Coming back on the return. York looking strong. Very good grip strength. And she does it, no drops at all. Smooth. Looking at a strong pace to be set for the rest, rest of the strong women to follow. As we've seen in our first category, every inch counts. They need to keep digging deep, getting as far as they can. These huge groups, it really is important to just keep pushing hard and pick up those points. Easier said than done. Absolutely. But it's much easier to talk about it from here than it is to do it out there. <laughs> York, <laughs> establishing herself as our leader. Very good so time far. there. 27.28 seconds clearing the course. Less than 14 seconds each way if you divide it in half. Moving on to heat number two, we have Christy Stefanik of USA in lane one, Kiki Berlin Johnson of Norway in lane two, Samantha McLean of Great Britain in lane three, and Lauren O'Connor Butler in I lane four. I think it's worth watching Kiki in this one. Kiki isn't the most powerful in terms of the weightlifting events, you know, with the, the deadlifts and the pressing, but she's a great athlete, very good at awkward objects, and I think she'll blitz through these farmers. She's tall, she's got long legs. That means every step that she takes is gonna cover more ground. Energy efficiency is what I'm thinking here. So this is an event where you could possibly have height, lever length playing a positive role in the athlete's performance. Albeit it is a longer way up on the pick. The deadlift will be hard for her. You know, it's, it's a heavy weight for her deadlift, but if she gets it up, she should move well. Yeah. I mean, that is the question mark. It's, you know, these weights just keep going up each year. 100 kilos in each hand. That's a 200 kilo deadlift right there. 440 pounds in total that these women are having to carry up this 100 foot course. But Kiki, no problem with the pickup and she's moving well. McLean in lane number three, also going really quick. Kiki gets there first, barely. Who can be the quickest on the, the turn? turn. Accelerate. This is good by Kiki. McLean is right behind her, just McLean stomping is, away. Yeah, she's catching her up. Who can get there first? Wow. There we go. You very, are right, Lars. very good from both women in the center there. Beryl Johnson and McLean both performing exceptionally well. And our other athletes are doing well here. We have to remember, you know, just finishing this course is a huge feat of strength. Stefanik gets across the line. So close now for O'Connor Butler. Oh. She wanted it so bad. A few inches away from the finish. You know, but she, she just drained the tanks as much as she could, just gave it her absolute best. Incredible effort. All right, lane number one, Melanie Poa of New England. Lane number two, Christy, Kristen McCarthy of the USA. Lane three, Joy McDonald. And lane four, Jessica Rush. The last three athletes all representing the United States of America.
Kiki with a time of 23.47 seconds. Fast. That is fast. McDonald taking very small and controlled steps. This has got to be a Extremely really... Extremely small steps, aren't they? Yeah, but this has got to be PR territory for her if she's being that articulate. Yes. Yeah. Jessica Rush. Rush just moving well. Another veteran athlete. She's been competing as long as I have in the sport, if not longer. I remember her from some of my very earliest... That was a great, earliest great run there by Rush. She's looking, looking like a force. Rush and Poa, clear the course. McDonald still chipping away. And McCarthy on the return. McCarthy, once she's up, moves really well. Just grip giving out a little bit too quickly. Ah! Now just that energy is being zapped, the leg strength, the back strength. Now, Lars, where are you at with using wrist straps on a farmer's walk? Personally, I don't use them. I uh, never felt the need. I, I've always had a fairly strong grip and... I don't like the, the blood kind of being constricted into my hand, but I know some people like put, to put the straps on too, try and almost help with that claw-like feeling. I'm right there with you on, on wanting to keep the blood flow. Like The last thing I want to feel is like I'm restricting blood flow and get halfway down a course and feel the hand start to go numb. Yeah. But this is one of those things like we were talking about. The same shoe doesn't fit the right way for everyone. Absolutely. You know? I've seen athletes be very effective with it. So just because I don't do it doesn't mean it's wrong for everyone. That's the great thing with a sport like Strongman. We're all built differently. We all have strengths and weaknesses. We all do things slightly different as well. If you watch the top 10, say, athletes deadlift, there's all little intricacies that they do differently. You know, you look at Brian Shaw, he's got a very wide stance. You look at someone like uh, Bish, who's much narrower in terms of the foot positioning. You get like a Martins, whose feet are turned out more. Other athletes, their feet are uh, kind of straight ahead. Everyone's got these little things that they do differently, but it works for them. The principles are the same. But there's these little kind of intricacies that it's about developing what works best for you as an individual. We all are built very differently. And it's good to look to people for motivation and inspiration. But at the same time, you've got to know how... The best thing to do is look at people that are built very similar to you. Because yeah. I see a lot of people make the mistake of watching Eddie Hall deadlift and say, that's how I need to deadlift. But they might be seven foot tall. <laughs> you know, it's, it's figuring out the, the mechanics that work for you as an individual. Hager, Hughes, Olin, and Meyer are our next heat out. Myler is just looking fierce so fast. That was brilliant there. All right behind her. Representing well. She flew down that course. I'm interested to see what time she did it in because that was fast. 20 31 there wow. for Claire Myler. Unbelievable time of performance. The day so far. And Heger finishes the course. She was looking fierce in that return. Hughes has got 15 seconds to finish this off. Dig deep now. You're so close. Just come on. Get it up. Hips through. Good. Oh. I'd leave it there now. Claire Myler really blitzed down that course. Averaging 10 seconds on each distance right there. Just... Incredible. Our fifth heat will be Annika Karhu of Finland in lane one, Monica Gragg of USA in lane two, Aliyah Arnett of USA in lane three, and Meg Robson Austin of England in lane four.
Karen in lane number one moving well. Wow, she is running, Laws. This is quick. She knows she has very, to beat Myler. Very, fast. Look at the foot speed. She's coming right at us. 19.31 to beat. Wow. Whoa, wow. she knows that's good. Look at that victory dance. She's so happy. I love it. And Cheering on her well. fellow athletes. Here comes Greg. Inching out, Robson. Greg, very solid with her grip there. She was just steady all the way, but held on tight. And then Robson Austin also finishing across the line. Now, Leah Arnett needs to dig deep, get some more distance here. I am very curious to know that time from Carhu. Fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're right on that one. Yeah, she was right in front of us on that lane. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, hoping that barricade between us and her holds up <laughs> if it needs to. We will, of course, bring you the official results as soon as we have them. Heat number six, Stephanie Vermichuk. Oh, well, before we go, we got Karu with a time of 20.13 seconds. Not quite good seconds. enough to take first place. Not quite, but so close. Very quick. Lane one, Stephanie Vermichuk of USA. Lane two, Aisha Uya of Ireland. Lane three, Carrie Ann Davis. And lane four, Michaela Moore of England. Aisha Ulla, our defending champion, and she is out the blocks quick as well. Moving well down this first length. 15 meters complete, 50 foot. Very quick turn. Let's look at that time again. This is going to be another fast run. And wow. Alicia Uller with a fantastic performance there, showing why she's the champ. Moore also going really well. Davis calling it there. Like we were talking about, the deadlift still remains. You cannot make any lapses in judgment. Absolutely, but Aisha Ulla there, re very, very quick. Let's see if we can get a time for Aisha. Aisha, oh look, 19.16. And I think that puts her in first place. Might be wrong, we'll wait for the official result, but I am confident. Fast. And there we go. We've got official confirmation. That is first place for Aisha Ulla there. Wow. Incredible. Still one more heat to go. In lane one will be Rachel Paveglio. Lane two, Kelly Jones. Lane three, Julia Smay. And lane four, Mary Colasanto. All four athletes representing the USA. Hearing a lot of support for Julius May. See lanes three and four are already locked in, run ready. Just waiting on the command to go. It's a little bit of uncertainty from the referees there. Having a little chat, making sure everything is correct. The scorer, Ben Joyce, there. 
Okay, referee looks ready. Wow. Polo Santo inches ahead, but all four ladies just moving. Like a blanket finishing yeah. there. Polo Santo just the hedge, moving quick. Can she hold out all the way across the line? She can indeed. Amazing performance there. Beautifully done. Jones falls short. Jones was going so well, and then it's a photo finish there between Jones and Pengelio. Smay needs to dig. She needs to dig deep to finish this distance. She's got to re refocus now. Don't worry about what's going on. She just needs to focus on finishing this. I think she's making a mistake there holding the back of the farmers. I was just the farmers about to bring that up. up. Tilting down, going into the ground. She'd be better off holding the front if you're going to go for a, a staggered grip. Yeah, I, I see that sometimes with athletes, you know, want to, wanting to utilize the tilt. Her scores for our women's masters category, Aisha Ula, 19.16 seconds, and fractions of a second separate her from Claire Myler in second place with 19.31 seconds. Annika Karu, still less than a full second away from first place in third with 20.13. Mary Colsanto with 20.55 seconds. And Kiki Berlin Johnson with 23.47 seconds, narrowly behind, or narrowly ahead of Sophie Allen. And I mean, you're looking down the rest of the screen. The time between 10th place and first place is, seven, is less than seven seconds. Yeah. Incredible. And those two going sub 20. That is going some. That's a different caliber of strength laws. In some ways, uh, Lovelace having the advantage there, of course, having done better in the previous event. She gets to come out in the last uh, foursome and knew the mark she had to hit. Would she have done 14, I wonder, had she, you know, didn't Maybe. have that mark to chase? It's, uh, it was, it's an advantage. That's the advantage of going, you know, doing well in the previous event. And we're moving straight on to the Masters women now. The weight stays the same. Here we go. So we have... Uh, Carrie Ann Davis, uh, Maria uh, Shrezinska, and Erin Jackson, and Joy McDonald are uh, foursome. McDonald of the USA, Jackson from Australia, Shrezinka of England, and Davis of the USA on platform one, closest to the camera. Davis on four reps. As is McDonald. Well, Shrezinka. Not off the mark yet. Six repetitions is our lead number at the moment. Davis closest to camera from the USA. Can she squeeze the seventh out? Seven repetitions there. There we go. <laughs> now giving everything there, Davis. And uh, coming up with a solid score, seven repetitions. Remember, 172 and a half kilograms in this uh, Masters women. And I believe next year, the uh, over 50 category for the women is going is to be... Is that going to happen? It's uh, looking very, very likely. It's that incredible to see the interest now in so many different classes. I remember watching a women's class and two people turning up. Now we have hundreds of athletes Every weekend all over the world wanting to compete in this sport. It's so good to see. Absolutely. As we get underway with the next uh, group of four, it's uh, Vermachuk, Arnett, McCarthy, and Rositas down on platform four. And already looks like Vermachuk has... Uh, McCarthy, feel like she's got it in it. McCarthy in lane three, looking very smooth, pulling steady reps there, up to five already. Interestingly enough, they're... Uh, the uh, lifter there on platform two, Arnott, choosing to pull her uh, straps up above her elbows. Going without the, without the straps. I mean, this is an axle bar. It's, it's not an easy grip. That's crazy. <laughs> but Vermachuk also tried the same thing, though still on zero repetitions. Down the end there, Rositis on five, six for McCarthy. And uh, she's the one who takes... The uh, most amount of reps out of that foursome, but Davis from the previous four, still our leader on seven reps. 
Well, the way this is rolling, of course, is the honours go to those who are leading from the previous events, or the previous event in this case. And uh, uh, the last foursome will have uh, Colasanto, Carew, Myler and Ulla of Ireland. So far, it's uh, Smey on platform one, who's doing the best on three reps. Hughes, O'Connor, Butler and Stefanik down Furthest from camera on platform four on three reps. Oh, oh my goodness me. Oh, she's strapped on there. That's, uh, she's trying to stop the bar rolling as well. Needs to pull it back herself. Just get herself composed. It's on two reps. Well, just looking at Smey here on platform one, going for her seventh repetition. Gets a down signal. Got to make sure she gets the hips through. Eight repetitions in the end for Smey. I think that puts her into the lead. Yes, it does. Yeah, it's uh, by one repetition. Lifting an axle bar, Loz. First of all, th there's no bend it's not on this no anyway. No flex at all in an axle bar. The, the weight is set lower and further away from you because of that thickness of that bar. It's like, it's like being a slight deficit. And because you get no flex at all, you really need that power off the floor. Uh, is, it, is it just me or is this, is this actually a, a scaffolding bar? <laughs> it looks like a very, <laughs> very long scaffolding bar. Robson Austin on one, Heger on two, uh, Poa on three, and Greg on platform four. So Robson Austin Make from three. England. Just getting back into Strongman. She's had a break for a couple of years, and I saw her compete earlier this year, getting back into it. Good to see her at this level, competing in a World Championships, and she's doing very solid here. She's on to six reps. Still going strong. She's got more in her. She is well in the lead now on in this heat of four athletes. Needs one more to go tied with Smey, who's our current overall leader. Eight reps. One more to take the lead now for herself. Needs to be quick. That oh, was close. does she get the down did signal she in time? It. Yes, she did. They've given her the signal that uh, it was right on the clock. She now, that could be overturned. Perfectly. I don't know. It might be overturned, but uh, if it isn't, that is our leader for these women in the 40 plus category. What's been your highlight so far today, Loz? I've got to say, Andrea Thompson on the Viking Press. Isn't for she me. awesome? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm a little bit biased because I coach Andrea, but that was. Truly incredible. Tyler on the Viking Press was exceptional as well. Boy, we've got a new star on this guy, haven't we? Do you know what? The, the open class, there's 10 athletes in there that have all impressed me. Yeah. The, it's a really, really good class. Thing. And, and it's a great thing with OSG. It's giving us an opportunity to see these new future stars. And we've already seen great athletes come out of OSG. The likes of Kevin Ferris, the likes of Luke uh, Richardson. Absolutely. Evan Singleton, even though he didn't win here, he's competed here. I, I've got to say, there's been a few athletes in the crowd who've come up to me. Hey, uh, you know, Giants live this, Giants live that. Guys who aren't testing themselves here. They're hanging around, but they know how difficult it is. You go into the cauldron of OSG, you're going to be found out. Well, you know, <laughs> we've got Nedsman competing in this, and I think it's great that he has. It's but brave. It's a brave move from Nedsman. Athletes need to prove themselves. Absolutely. They really do. You can't just rely on one invite. You've got to get in there, prove that you can win, and you're, you're a good all-round strongman. Well, that was a pretty solid heat. That was uh, two eights uh, and one nine and a five. So some uh, impressive lifting there from uh, our women. But of course, we are, as it were, moving up the list in terms of uh, their ability on previous events, which is often a good indicator as how they might do in the next Strongman event. And we are moving on really quickly here as uh, our next group, Moore, McLean, Olin and Beryl Jonsson. Kiki Beryl Jonsson down the end. They're just asking for her bar to be cleaned. Fair enough. Kiki, Can't have a real uh, veteran. She's been around the sport for so long. She's a true veteran, and she is over 50. And I say that in hushed tones, so she doesn't slap me. <laughs> yeah, but, she's, uh, she's furthest from us here, Colin. One of the real <laughs> reasons why I, you think you need an over 50 category now is you're having truly, you know, epic performances from women in their 50s in this over 40s. And and it, you know, if she does a, an incredible performance and comes, let's say fourth or fifth, you think, wow, she deserved to be the world's strongest woman over 50. We're just seeing more and more athletes that are willing to compete and wanting to compete. It's just fantastic. 
So it's Beryl right. Jonsson there on five on the right-hand side. I'll the one with you, you know, the deadlift isn't her strength. She's good at the moving events. She's good at the dynamic events. Deadlifting, pressing, they're her weaknesses. So to still be improving at this age just shows how well she's training, how much it means to her. So seven reps from Moore McLean. Six, all in on five. And Kiki Beryl Jonsson also getting... Uh, I believe five repetitions Watching down the end. Watching these ladies walk away, we're seeing some sore bodies right now. <laughs> the three-hour wait between events, that's tough for a lot of these athletes. They won't be used to that. Yes, it's hard to think what else you could do in this kind of competition other than run maybe six, eight platforms at a time. It's uh, one option. Of course, this was meant to be in three days, and, and it's, uh, again, Lynn Morehouse deserves as many positive and uh, back-slapping mentions <laughs> as we can give him because putting this on and then keeping it going through the hurricane has been an extraordinary effort as we have uh, Uller on the far platform, Myler, Carew and Colasanto closest to us. Myler looking really explosive there in lane three. She was fantastic in the farmer's walk and the deadlift is suiting her as well. Really solid pulls. Ulla not far behind. She's on seven repetitions. Closest to us on lane number one, Colastanto. Wow, she's going to get double figures here. This is a She impressive. hits ten. Ten repetitions. Goes into lead. Now she's on 11. Ulla hits ten reps as well. As does Myla. Wow, this is a competitive heat. Our top four women, three of them on double figures. Colastanto, can she hit 13? She does. 13, wow. 11, and 11. Woo. So the best before that was uh, Robson Austin on nine reps, but Collar Santo goes to 13. And uh, two of the other final four also go over the double figures mark. Collar Santo there takes the knee, but uh, I think in ex exhaustion just to get that belt off. And uh, we move on. That's a yet another category done. We are flying through this as we move on to our axle deadlift for the women under 73 kilograms. And the and weight goes up. It goes up to 186. What an interesting number. 186 kilograms. 410 which is pounds. 410 pounds. Yes, good conversion, laws. That was quick in your head. Well done. <laughs> I'm good at pounds and, and kilos now. You have to be. Especially when it's written in front of you and I didn't read it. <laughs> Helps a little bit more. <laughs> so then, uh, it looks like we might have had one athlete pull out here. It's um, Alicia Donner of the USA. There's a strike through her name. More information on that in a second. In which case, uh, I think we'll have uh, our Sulich of Norway going on her own, and then That's we go into pause. always tough to go on your own. Really hard. Although a deadlift isn't such a, a bad event to have to go on your own. If it was a moving event, it's a little bit more of a disadvantage. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I mean, deadlift, you're kind of going to pull what you you're going to pull, you aren't you? just pull yeah. what you can pull, absolutely. It's uh, as we look at uh, back at what happened in the last category and prepare for our women's under 73. There's a couple of handsome chaps on the <laughs> telly, Laws, eh? So, the women over 40s. He did do them for this. Yeah, I thought you did. Yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> replay of this one right here. Uh, let's see if we can get the next score sheet. These ladies are all ready to be face-to-face -face with these heavy, heavy bags. The same series, 100, one, or 150, 175, 200, and 225 on the sandbag weights in pounds. Uh, Krasinsinska, Jackson, Vermichuk, and Higer in their respective lanes attacking this sandbag series. And just for those that want the kilos, it's 68 kilos, 79 and a half, 91 and 102 kilos, that final fourth bag. Thank you for the tip to all of our metric system followers there, Laz. You know, we saw with the under 64 kilo class that you need if you want to finish the series, which all of these athletes should want to do, I understand it might be outside of some of their wheelhouse, but you need to make an absolute speed run out of these first three. Give yourself that cushion of time to wrestle that behemoth at the very end. A valiant effort from our first heat there. Gonna get the bags reset and ready for our second heat. 
Lacey Hughes will be in lane one of the USA. In lane two, Monica Gregg, USA. Lane three, Christy Stefanik, USA. And lane number four, Annika Karhu of Finland. A fast shoulder by Karhu in lane number four. Karhu on the third bag in lane number four. Greg really working hard to get that down command, but she gets it and she smiles as she moves on to that second bag. Ten seconds left. Karhu moving on to the final bag. She has to move. But she is eating away her time. There's just not enough left. You need to, if you're an athlete who has yet to go, you need to take a page out of Rhiannon's book and know that that is a speed you have to operate at if you want to finish this series. But I'll tell you something, Rhiannon is a well-practiced athlete. She She's is. put a lot of work into this event. And it shows. It does, It indeed. shows. But the world champion will be the one who did not leave any stone unturned in their prep. All right. Heat number three. Joy McDonald of USA in lane one, Amara Rosaitis of Canada in lane two, T. York of USA in lane three, and Laura O'Connor Butler of the USA in lane number four. McDonald still has her lanyard across her neck. It would be distracting me if that was me out there. Well, luckily it gets tossed to her back by that sandbag. Oh. Oh, come on. Connor Butler. Butler. So close as she does get the down signal. Moves on to the last bag. Only eight seconds left, though. Valiant effort by O'Connor Butler in lane number four, but just showing again how much time that final bag will consume. All right, moving on to lane, or to heat number four, Aliyah Arnett of the USA in lane one, Melanie Poa, New Zealand, lane two, Kiki Burley Johnson, Norway in lane three, and Sophie Olin of the United Kingdom in lane number four. The, the real challenge for this, Gabe, is you're looking at 11 seconds per bag. And really, you've got to go faster than that on those first few. Because uh, ideally, last you one... need 5-5-5 five, 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 and then 30 <laughs> seconds left yeah. for that last one. <laughs> That's the ideal. I think Kiki is going to be worth watching on this one. I think so, too. A tall athlete, long arms, long levers, able to really wrap around and crush the bag as she brings it to her shoulders. Need a little bit faster reaction time out of her. Interesting technique, though. I didn't like that. She made that harder than I think she needed to. She got it off the floor, no problem, up to her lap, and then she's trying to adjust her hands. Going right underneath. I don't think she needs to do that. I don't think so either, but there she we go. moves she's on to the two. third bag. She is leading the heat right now. She needs to keep the pedal down and move. Get it up to your lap. Seven seconds left. It's all about getting this last bag for Kiki. Nope. It's just not there. I thought like, Kiki could do better on that. I think so, too. It may be a bit of technical refinement. Like you said, I think she might have made it just a little bit harder on herself than necessary. But getting to that third bag, still with, with these incredible weights, very respectable, very impressive. Heat number five, Kristen McCarthy in lane one of the USA. Samantha McLean of Great Britain in lane number two. Carrie Ann Davis of the USA in lane three. And Michaela Moore of England in lane number four. Fast by Moore. Moore looked really good with that first bag. Up to the lap nicely. Good reactive technique. Needs to make sure it's up to her shoulder, though. Just isn't quite getting it on quite enough. 
took a, a little bit go. longer than it should have. Needs to get right around that center, onto the lap, adjust the hand, that's it. Now drive and thrust those hips. There Good. you go, that's a better position. Perfect. Much better. 12 seconds. Kayla Moore. She needs to move fast. Come on, Michaela. Five seconds. It's oh, a good effort. Good effort indeed, but that bag is just a behemoth of a sandbag there. So far, Rhiannon Lovelace, the only athlete to successfully compete, complete the four bag series, and that How was in the under 64 class. these helpers today, these loaders, doing such a good job resetting quickly. What a great staff. All right, we have heat number six. I believe we'll have a vacant lane number one. In lane number two will be Julia Smay of the U.S. Lane three, Kelly Jones, the USA. And lane number four, Meg Robson Austin of England. Julia, Kelly, and Meg are three athletes in this heat. That was powerful by Smay in lane number two. So there we go. Graphic is correct now with Robson Austin in lane number four. This third bag taking a lot of time from all these athletes. Jones sneaks into the lead there. Ten seconds left. She needs to move and move Come fast. Come on, Meg. Let's hold this. Doesn't get the down signal yet. Not no, the referee is being strict of her. Oh, she so couldn't close. quite get that third bag. You have to show established control. You really do. And on a, on a bag, on a sandbag, the weight can always shift and it can change. Yeah. yeah the rule <laughs> is it needs to be under control. Arm needs to be away. They're waiting for that momentary pause. And then the referee gives the down signal. Our final heat, heat number seven, Rachel Paveglio of the USA in lane one, Claire Meyer, Myler of Wales in lane two, Aisha Ula of, in, of Ireland in lane number three, and Mary Colasanto of the USA in lane number four. Our athletes that have proven themselves to be the strongest based off of the last event and their placing. If, they, if there's anyone that's gonna do it, it's gonna be these four ladies right here. Let's see. Colasanto is ready to attack. Very reactive. She almost threw that bag over her shoulder. That was fast by Myla, Ulla, and Colasanto there. Colasanto is flying through these first few. Myla not far behind, though. Colasanto, Colasanto has the time. Come on, Claire. Let's attack this last one. Plenty Colasanto of times. in the lead. 15 seconds. They have time. Claire Myler up to her left. left. If she can time this right, it's doable. Needs to thrust those hips. Get the hand underneath. Work that bag up her body. Ah, just not enough power left. It's been an exhausting day for these athletes. They're going to be feeling it across their body. They are. And Anna. that is a heavy bag. That is Again. a heavy bag. So far, none of our women's masters over 40 were able to get it. Rhiannon in love. Aisha Ola of Ireland in lane one and Rachel Paveglio of USA in lane number two. Athletes are underway. And both of them moving quickly. Ola looking smooth and steady. Got her head down, her feet stomping. Look at that level car. That's a really good run right there by the Irish lady. What a beautiful carry by Ulla in lane one. You've got to look at the time for that. Veglio back up on her feet. She needs to clear this. Can she get across? She does. And she does. Wow. Aisha Ulla. Of Ireland, looking so steady under that supreme weight of this car walk. With a time of 14.7 seconds, our fastest time on the car walk today so far. There we go. Still fighting hard. Last year's Masters champion, 
is not giving up on that title just yet. So our next two athletes will be Samantha McLean from Great Britain and Meg Robson Austin from England. I'm going to look into why one's from England and one's from Great Britain. We're going to look into that. Yeah, where, where is the line drawn in the sand there? <laughs> All right. Samantha versus Meg. A bit rocky on the start for McLean. Yeah. But once she's up, she's moving. All of the bones stacked on top of each other now. The load is supported, and she's moving down the course. There's a lot of swaying on those vehicles at the moment. Taxes oh. that core strength. You know, as tempting as it is so to stop, quicker. it does cause some sway. All that inertia coming to a halt and then starting up again. But McLean's power persists. Robston Austin inching closer. They're neck and neck right now. 20 seconds remain. Meg might just be inching ahead. Each so close to pick. tell from this angle. Draining the strength every time it goes down. Come on. Oh, so close to that finish line. So close. Remember that line has the mic, the white marker on the wheel has to pass the line at the very end. Very close, tremendous effort from our two strong men there in that heat. We'll move on to heat number three as the cars get reset. Coming onto the field shortly will be Julia Smay of the USA, which will be in lane one closest to view, and Annika Karhu of Finland will be in lane two. Interesting uh, point, just to point out. I saw Meg had her knee wraps on there. Would you go with knee wraps on this type of event? Personally, no. If I had knee issues that I need to work through, maybe I would wear some knee wraps, but I don't want to restrict blood flow. I want to keep that mobility. I want to be able to move well without interruption in my steps. Yeah, I totally agree there. I mean, if there is an injury there, I understand the knee wraps, but really you don't want that the, the blood filling up in those quads. Ideally, I would want a sleeve. Some compression, some warmth, but not any restriction in Absolutely. motion. And you know as well as I do, if you put on knee wraps, you do have a ticking time clock before circulation starts getting interrupted. Yeah. The last thing you want on such a heavy load like this is your legs to start going numb halfway down the course. Smay versus Karu. Both ladies up well and they need to stay stable. Keep moving. This is looking good. Fast times as long as they do not go down and they're both moving well. Wow. And I think we both got across the line. No drops. Great time from both. And they both seem to accelerate as they move faster down the course. Big smiles there. She's pleased with that. <laughs> there she goes. And she's still got energy to run off. Karu, very, very pleased with her performance. Definitely riding a high after getting to carry a car all the way across the course successfully. Smay, who actually won that heat, but look at just walking a little bit more gingerly. Definitely not running off there. I don't know if there's any injuries or if it's just stiffness and tightness from another grueling event. She looks so stable off the start, as, as did Carhu. But for them moving very nicely. There's something about seeing those cars levitating on the ground and just two feet stomping beneath <laughs> them. Amazing. It's just been helped off over there. Hopefully, once again, no serious injuries. 
it's good to see, even though she's being assisted off the field, she is on her two feet and walking. So we have a great team on staff here to tend to her and get her primed and ready for these next two events as best as possible. All right, our next heat, our second to last heat, will be Michaela Moore of England in lane number one, closest to view, and Kelly Jones of USA in lane number two. see Michaela Moore stepping into her car. And Kelly Jones in lane number two. England versus the USA. Both athletes are up. A drop from Jones in lane number two. Moore persists down the course. Both cars go down. Wow, Moore gets it. Jones was coming back well towards the end. Just went down about half a meter from the line. And both ladies succeed in completing the course. As arduous and cumbersome as it was, they got the car walk. Laws, what would you be thinking of using as footwear in something like this? I was always a big fan of my Merrill walking shoes on, on this type of event. I wanted something that could support my feet but had decent grip as well. Uh, I know some athletes like wearing boots. Some athletes like wearing the barefoot shoes. I, I, I was a, a big fan of the walking shoes. They just gave me that security in terms of ankle stability and I felt comfortable that I could move quick. They weren't too heavy. They were my choice in an event that I really enjoyed and excelled at. Coming from a man who has done some very heavy yokes, those are some potential words of high wisdom there. Footwear on this, though, is a very personal preference type of you know thing. We, everyone's a little bit different. We've all got a different feel. It, there's, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to footwear on a on moving event like this. Very great point to make. The athlete needs to know their own bodies, their own demands, and possibly working around whatever kinks or injuries or issues they have too. But definitely a high impact event. A lot of downforce with every step. When one leg is removed, you have all of the weight of that car and the athlete's body weight bearing from one single foot. All right, we have Claire Meyer of Wales in lane one and Mary Cosanto of USA in lane two. Can either touch Aisha Ula's time of 14.7 seconds? They're going to have to move fast. Cosanto looking good. They're both moving steadily. I think Ula is going to be safe in terms of her time, but this is a very solid run. So Cosanto accelerating a bit oh, as she approaches. Claire just goes down there. Cosanto, no drops. A Come on, Clay. Let's get across that line. Keep going. There we and go. Both clear the course. I think Aisha is safe with her time. We'll get a confirmation. Myla relieved that that one's over. I think. Mary Cosanto, two seconds behind Aisha Ula with a very impressive 19.03 seconds. Or not two seconds. Ula got 14, correct? She was 14, yeah. Okay, so five, five seconds. That just, <laughs> untouchable. <laughs> untouchable, the fastest time we've seen so far. And now the weights go up. So our women's over 40, again, we're, we're seeing Aisha Yula, very, very fast time, Annika Karhu, but Julia Smey only a third of a second behind in third place. Mary Cosanto still finishing in sub-20 seconds, 
And then Claire Myler, 27.23 in fifth. Michaela Moore, 29.06. Kelly Jones, 36.7. And Rachel Paveglio, 39.67. With the last two athletes barely falling short of clearing the course, but going well over halfway. And there is our standing after five events with Mary Colasanto comfortably with a nine and a half point lead over Aisha, the defending champion. Tied in second with Claire Myler. Well, maybe we'll get moving to see on. that one again later, but yeah. uh, we'll move on now as uh, this is moving quickly here with the women's under 64 kilogram category. And it will be uh, this Samantha, the, um, Samantha McLean. The yes, this is the Masters women. I do beg your Meg pardon. Robson at Austin as well. It is uh, the Masters, women's Masters, Samantha McLean against uh, Robson Austin. So weights stay the same for the Masters. Finishing on that fifth, just shy of 55 kilos, 120 pounds. Meg working hard to get that second dumbbell. McLean onto the third. In that situation there, obviously she's hit it, she's got near to the top. Is it, is it more drop with the legs or more uh, hit with the legs, would you advise? More hit with the legs. She needs a little bit more oomph coming out of those legs. And you can see she's kind of like moving away from the dumbbell. It's, it's the natural instinct. You're trying to get away from that dumbbell as it comes down, but you've actually got to try and almost force yourself under the dumbbell. Have that confidence to drop under and then you can lock out. How interesting. That's if you push it. away from you, hmm. you're relying on the small shoulder muscles and no one's side raising that kind of weight. Here's a question, though, because you, you, you picture the old school circus dumbbell axe and they would go to the side. And you, you see Novikov does a, a movement a little and bit Novikov like that, doesn't he? Novikov is in a league of his own when it comes to dumbbell. <laughs> He's got this ability to, no matter where the dumbbell goes, he can manipulate his body to get under it. He is quite special. Now then, we move on to our next pairing, Rachel Paveglio of the USA up against Kelly Jones on the right-hand side, also of America. Very little leg drive there as well, just relying on that brute strength, upper body strength. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You don't get extra points, but people do watch with respect when you can just strict press these overhead implements. Yes, indeed. And... Uh, 45 kilograms now. This is getting a, quite a serious one-arm press yeah. if she pulls this off. And it's just struggling with the balance there. The dumbbell's starting to twist as she drives. And do you have a visual when you see the, the circus dumbbell? Do you try and make sure you know, you're almost, yeah, most of your arm is out of your sight, as it were? I, you can see there Paveglio yeah, no, just glancing I, left to see if she's got it in the right position. I try and get the uh, one end of the dumbbell tight to the back of my neck and then I'm just trying to look up and kind of I almost watch where the dumbbell's going so I'm would, where would you feel be. cold steel against yes, the back so of your I like skull? I feel it against me if it's kind of off your neck or off your back of your head it's too far away you need it connected as close as possible so we move on to our next pairing and it'll be uh, Michaela Moore of England against Claire Myler of Wales who is yet to show there she is coming through Claire Myler's been fantastic as well all weekend really pushing for the podium we are in our women's masters 40 plus category and we're underway then easy on this first dumbbell for both of these athletes a British battle on to the second again easy right the 100 pound this is a big jump Not for these ladies. Moore goes through. Myla unable to get the 100. Needs to really use that leg power that she's got. Oh, Moore was so close there with the 120. Moore just has to get it back onto the platform here. She's got to be careful. Doesn't want to trip over. Dunbar's a weird event. You can have people that are really good at log they're not necessarily always going to be good at dumbbell. It's not a universal crossover in terms of shoulder event. It tends to suit the more athletic athletes, to be honest. Here's a question for you. Uh, so I think we see both of them saying no more, thank you. <laughs> uh, and it'll be McLean with two dumbbells in 18.9 seconds. You may well still be leading here, but uh, Zadruna Saviskas, we'll get to see the great big Z doing this later on. Of course, 
arguably the greatest log presser of all time, certainly constant world records and took it to the new heights before Iron Baby stole off him. Now then, his press with the dumbbell, it's not the prettiest, is it? No, not at all. He's got such strong shoulders and triceps. And he's not bad at dumbbell by any means. But for someone with such a big log and axle, his dumbbell was nowhere near as good as those two. He can have relied on that brute shoulder, tricep, core strength. Whereas you look at an Alexei Novikov, uh, Kiliushkovsky, they're a lot more explosive, athletic. It's about utilizing the whole body for those guys. Yes, arguably the stronger man in the shoulders, but it, being a strong man doesn't always uh, yes, equate to that. Now then, uh, Colasanto against Smey here. It's an all-American penultimate pairing, and it's Smey who's got it to the shoulder here. Can she get a good hit at this? And that's a great press there. On to the final one. 120 pounds each of them, and it's neck and neck. Smey up to the shoulders. Looks balanced, looks like she can do this. Compose, leg drive. Oh, just a bit too much. Colasanto's 20 pound jump, just catching her out. Colasanto's chance is missed. What happened there? She didn't even give it a hit. She gives it another go though. She's got to get in position, feel comfortable oh, and- Just ah. pushing forwards. Starting to panic as the time runs out as well. You do feel that. <laughs> you get to that point where your energy zapped and you're still out there. You know you're battling. That time's ticking away and you're just trying to give everything that you can. So those two uh, head off as uh, we have uh, just two to come now. It's uh, the Finn Annika Karu against Ireland's uh, Aisha Ulla. Aisha Ulla. Irish names are always fascinating ones to get right. <laughs> Aisha Ulla is our, our current champion from 2021. Indeed, yeah. Don't try and read it, just to remember how to say it. Uh, it's Ulla against Karu, as they both chase down the time of Moore. Three dumbbells in 18.09 seconds. Both That's athletes through the 70 pounds, no problem. Move on to the 80. Good rep for both, but Ulla looked like she struggled with that one. This 20 pound jump could be quite substantial. Annika Karu on the left hand side is just a step ahead of Aisha Ulla. But Ulla, oh! But she gets it. She's going to be happy with that. I wasn't so convinced watching, watching the 80 pound dumbbell, but that is a big, big rep for last year's champion. Yeah, Can she do the same with the 120? It has a look of uh, Pa O'Dwyer's uh, technique, funnily enough, with the, <laughs> the arm hanging down, and she hits it. Yeah, pa almost has this like lazy-looking technique, doesn't he? But Incredibly, it works. <laughs> it's a very casual look. Ooh. Well, Karu <laughs> takes a blow to the shoulder there, hasn't managed to finish the third. She could lose quite a lot of points here if she's not careful. And, uh, well, that's uh, that heat over, that's that category over as we move towards the women's under 73 kilogram in the Circus Dumbbell, our penultimate event today. And uh, we'll have a look in a second or two here at exactly what happened in the Circus Dumbbell. The uh, women's masters 40 plus. Uh, the scores are just coming in. It was such a shame that we've had to see Nancy Johnson pull out. She's leading this class currently, but devastating injury there on the car walk. Yes, I've, this is the women's under 73 to come, yes. I so heard she uh, broke her tibia and fibia. Wow, is that right? Goodness me, I didn't realize it was as bad as that. So, Mikaela Moore then. Three dumbbells in 18.09 seconds, almost a full second ahead of Claire Myler to take the win in the women's 40 plus. Aisha Ola putting in a solid performance. Nobody getting the four dumbbells, but uh, it came down to speed on the third. Julia Smey in fourth position, and Colasanto, the uh, last of uh, the dumbbell pressers to get all three up. And then from Annika Karu downwards, it was a battle on the two dumbbells, and I'm afraid Meg robson Austin down the bottom was the slowest on the two. Overall points then, 50 points for Mary Colasanto and uh, Claire Myler. Some margin back. It's a, quite a yawning gap with uh, event six completed. One event to go. Aisha Ulla, just a single point down into third, Lawrence. And Mikaela Moore, Julia Smey, could we see them still pressuring the podium? Or they do you think that's our... a chance. I mean, Mary's in a great position right now, but Claire and Aisha are going to be in a battle going into the Atlas Stones. 
Absolutely. Well, uh, I guess you could say, in theory, almost all the way down to fifth place, you have a battle for the podium, assuming slip-ups happen. No one wants to see those, but they could. So uh, the Women's Masters 40-plus dumbbell ladder is completed. And now we move on to our Women's Masters category. Samantha McLean in lane one of Great Britain and Meg Robinson, Robson Austin of England in lane two. The same weights on this series. Well, let's see. This is just Samantha McLean on her own. Meg will be in the next heat. But Samantha already on stone number four. Reapplying that tacky like an old pro. Triple extension. Very good. Very solid, very consistent, good speed. Reapply that tacky and get after that fifth stone. Roll it in. Oh, and it pulls her forward. She recovers very well. Good. You don't very see that too good. often. Oh, I couldn't even recover from that in my first competition. And a fight onto the platform. And it is. Oh, oh just barely missed it. But you got to admire that grit and determination to get the job done. Absolutely. Samantha McLean no of Great quit. Britain. There is no quit in that woman. Nothing but respect for that. Heat number two, Meg Robson, Austin of England in lane one. Rachel Paveglio of USA in lane two. Robson Austin showing some exceptional execution with speed on these first three stones. That sense of urgency, just one stone, immediately quit moving those feet over, getting after that next stone, saving as much time as possible. Oh, and a fumble for Meg in lane one. Rachel catches up to there her. There we go. Meg Robson go. on her fourth, on her fifth stone. Push it up. There you go. Good. Robson Austin moves on to her final stone with seconds on the clock. Just a bit of a fall. Just a fall. Right before the whistle blows. But five stones down for Robson Austin in lane number one. Very, very solid effort. Very good athlete. Heat number three, Annika Karhu of Finland in lane one. Julia Smey, USA, lane two. We just saw our event leader, Meg Robson Austin, five stones in 48.68 seconds. Easier said than done, but to become the leader, all these women need to do is lift all six stones. Absolutely. Quick feet, fast triple extension, and of course, load the last one as fast as possible. Who will be the first to load all six? Very, very fast first stone. Karhu moves on to stone number four after a quick three. Consistent power from our Finnish athlete. Absolutely, that triple extension is looking strong. 250 pounds for Karhu. Julius May reapplying the tacky. And Karhu moves on to her sixth and final stone, the big 275. How much does she have left in the tank? Ten seconds. It's now or never. 
You know, Evan, with six stones of increasing weight in a 60-second time frame, the athlete really has to keep the gas pedal down. They cannot afford to stop and psych themselves up. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, this is this is a part of the competition. This is the top ten. This is where the points are going to be the closest. This is the most important time to not make any mistakes. Your footwork needs to be on point. Your, your extensions need to be on point. And more than anything, you need to be fast. You need to be fast. If we can expect some fast showings, it's going to be out of this heat number four. Michaela Moore of England will be in lane one, and Aisha Ula of Ireland in lane number two. Both women proving to be absolute powerhouses all weekend long. But it has been a long contest and an arduous one. Five stones in 40.28 seconds is the time to beat. Who will get that sixth and final stone? Karhu of Finland proving herself to be the new event leader. But I think we will see all six stones go up in this heat. Just judging by what I've seen so far over these past two days, I think Ula of Ireland it's going to really leave a jaw-dropping performance here. That's the amazing thing about Strawman, and that's the thing that I personally love the most, is that absolutely anything can happen in this sport. I suppose you know that better than anyone. I, I think of a stone run in Glasgow last year with you and, uh, and Tom Stoltman. I don't remember that. <laughs> I bet you don't. <laughs> no, I don't remember that. It only cost me. Never mind. <laughs> We're not going to go into we, that. We won't go there. <laughs> but, yes, that's a perfect example of, yeah, my stone run last year. Every single thing needs to be on point. One mistake will cost you big. More. Very quick with Ula answering the call. Very quick stones. Explosive. Moore has the body height and long levers to really give her an advantage yes, here. She does. 250 pounds up to her lap, but. Oh. Tacky needs to be replaced. This tacky. here's a potential window of opportunity for Ula. Oh, that that pick was strong. The final stone for both ladies. This is it. This is for the lead. Michaela Moore gets it to her lap first. Can she get it on the platform? And she does. Michaela she Moore, has it. all six stones, and our new event leader, inching out Aisha Ula. Incredible. Aisha Ula. Now, that might come down to a technicality for Ula. I don't know if the judges will give it to her or not, but the stone was on the platform. Her hands just weren't removed. Michaela Moore, our new event leader with six stones in 48.9 seconds. One heat remains with our top two standings currently. Claire Myler of Wales will be in lane one and Mary Colasanto of the USA with a strong six and a half point lead over, over Claire Myler. Anything can happen, like you said. Anything can happen. But Michaela Moore setting the standard by what needs to take place. Mary Colasanto has a very strong lead at this point. She just needs a consistent performance to secure that championship crown. And I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to get. Let's see. Very fast first stone. Wow, Myler is flying with these. Myler really looking for some major points here. These picks are so strong. She's practically throwing it into her chest and catching it. You see Colasanto just one motion, that stone right there. That's going to save her time. Colasanto catches up to Myler. Both on five. Oh, oh, that's a costly error. 
those mistakes. Oof. Myler looking strong for that sixth. Oh, but a slight fumble. Ten seconds left. Get it on there. Wow. Oh, what Both a fight. Ladies falling short of the six stone series, but what a fight. Even with missing those last two stones, we are going to have to go back to scoring to see if Mary Colasanto, with her six and a half point lead, had enough of a cushion to still come out on top. Just another perfect example of every single thing needs to be on point. Those were our two leading ladies, and both of them, arguably, making mistakes, costing them big points. All right, Mary Colasanto still with that cushion to secure her victory after the final event. 55 points, putting her as our champion here at the official Strongman Games. Claire Myler and Aisha Ula will tie at 51 and a half points. It will come down to who had the better performance on the Atlas Stones. That will be the tiebreaker. Who got their stones faster? Michaela Moore with her pace setting run, getting all six stones, gets a strong fourth place at 46 points. Incredible, absolutely incredible. And it just goes to show you, if you can really bust your bottom and have as many points going to this final event. It does give you a cushion in case things should go wrong, just like with Colasanto right there. And onto your top three, taking the bronze trophy, representing Wales, Claire Myler. In second place, representing Ireland, Aisha Ula. And this year's World's Strongest Women's Masters, representing the United States, Mary Colasanto. There we go. See, that's all it was. We just couldn't see what we were doing. Photo op here, but ladies, I need you to stay put. We have an incredibly special trophy presentation. Women's Masters in a 40 plus, but guess what? Claire Myler from Wales gets a special trophy for being even more vintage. There we go, the 50 plus trophy as well. She's going home with all the hardware. Your strongest Masters Women's in the world, everybody. Women's U73, you are up next.